I'm Jacqueline Brooks. I ride on the Canadian dressage team, uh, and I've represented Canada at two Olympic Games. And I work at our stable, which I own with my mother, uh, called Brookhaven Dressage, just outside of Newmarket, Ontario. My day begins at the gym every morning um, because I'm still training for teams. Uh, and the, the, the great thing about a uh, job in this industry is that you have two, there's two sides to it. You're trying to earn a living at it and you're trying to be competitive at it at whatever level that you're comfortable being competitive at. So for me, because I'm continuing to try to make teams at the elite level, then I start the day in the gym and I put a, a good solid hour in at the gym before I go to the farm. And that gives the horses time to eat and digest their food and get out for some turnout. And then we start working at 10 o'clock and uh, we work through right till six, seven o'clock at night. Uh, training all the horses. I do um, my own competition horses first and then I move on to lessons and training other people's horses for the rest of the day. To be a professional at the elite level, um, one, you need, you know, you need a, a number of things and it's always that question, you know, what makes somebody an Olympian or what makes somebody go to the NHL and it's not always the one with greatest talent that ends up there and usually you'll see somebody coming up with a great deal of talent and if they're missing any of the other pieces of the puzzle then they don't get there um, for my sport which is dressage it's um it's a lot of uh, it's an academic sport there's a lot of balance involved like uh, golf you know the how you swing the club how the club hits the ball well we are on a flat surface uh, hopefully with you know uniform footing so all the all the balances that we ask the horse um, to go into we have to understand the physics of those balances and how that horse can do the maneuvers that we're asking them to do. Um, so for, for me, I think you're gonna be choosing dressage as your uh, career. You need to have a certain level of understanding academically of the sport and like that academic challenge. So if you did a lot of physics in school or math, or it might not be the perfect sport for you. Um, you also have to have that dedication to the hours that are required because the animal isn't a bicycle. So you don't train them for one hour and then you put them away and you go and you know do whatever you want for the rest of the day. It's that you need to have that uh, passion to be in that barn from early in the morning till late at night. And if that horse requires extra care, you're the one at you know midnight taking care of whatever problem that he may or may not have, maybe just uh, something simple or something very difficult, but you have to be the one that will put the time in taking care of all of the horses. And in particular, the one that you're trying to make that team with, you know? And so I think also then you need to have sympathy, empathy for the animal. You need to have some kind of ability to communicate with animals. If you're good with dogs, good with cats, um, you know, because again, the sport isn't an apparatus that is, you know, like a bicycle or a balance beam or something that doesn't have its own feelings and its own emotions. So you need to be very calm. You need to be the calm partner in the two. If something gets emotional or dramatic, you have to be the one that's calming the horse down. So I think, you know, that all that well-roundedness um, is required in our sport for sure. You have challenges in that you've got to find some uh, good way to plan your time, that you spend enough time improving yourself and enough time earning uh, your keep and earning your money so that you can do it. And that balance is tricky as well, because if what I find with a lot of professionals is they're so busy earning their money, teaching lessons, training horses, that often their own horses go to the back burner or their own self-care, their own workouts, whatever they're gonna do uh, to enhance their performance, that gets all shoved to the back. And it has to, because financially, if you don't make enough money, you can't afford to have your competitive horses either. So finding that balance uh, is very challenging. Um, it's putting enough time into your own education, again, that you're not working so hard taking care of the horses and teaching lessons that you're not improving yourself and you know dedicating some of your income to your own education whether that's your own continuing education with lessons or uh, if you're not going to shows that you go to some big shows and you see the top riders riding you spend a lot of time watching all the shows on youtube and all the riders and staying current with the sport so really time management is a, is a giant challenge just finding the time in the day because again with these horses 
they're, you get up in the morning, they need to be fed, they need to be mucked out, they need to be turned out, they need to be ridden, then they need to be fed again, and then they need to be fed and mucked out again, and then they need to be fed one more time. So, you know, it's not, you, know, you look at a triathlete or someone that can go swim in the pool in the morning, they take a few hours, recover, then they have another workout, they take a few hours, recover. They're not having to look after uh, their, their training partner um, for the majority of the day. So if you're going to get involved in, in this as a career, then you, you, you know, if you don't have a passion for it, then you will fail. You, you need to give it 110% every single day. What started out as a summer job grew into a, it was going to be for a couple of years and then I would get a, I would, you know, find some, some way else, some other way to earn money. And then one thing led to another and, uh, Time flew by and here I am still doing it and still loving it. Uh, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful way to live your life outdoors, out of an office, with the animals. It's, um, it's just, I, I was, I've, I've loved it since the day I started. Find somebody you want to learn from. So you need to look around at the professionals that are in the fields that you want to be in. And you need to spend some time with those professionals starting out so that your education is as great as it can be when you go out on your own. Um, and you've learned as much from them as you can. When you first go out on your own, I would try to, to minimize your expenses. So people want to get their own barn and start their own business and do all the boarding and do all the training. And it's such a giant investment and there's so much output uh, to do that right away that I would recommend you start smaller and that you go to a boarding facility, board your clients so that you're only doing your business as a training business in the beginning. And then once you've built up a certain amount of clientele, that it makes more sense than to lease a property or buy a property, that then you move to that direction and that you take your time, that you really know at each step along the way, you have enough income to support the next step. It's an expensive sport to do at the elite level. Um, it's expensive to take care of horses. So um, you, need to, you need to get to a level of understanding of the sport that you can charge enough for your knowledge and that people are getting their money's worth to make it worthwhile. So it's not the kind of, uh, kind of job that you would do, say you, you just came out of public school or high school. This is like, it requires a PhD, it requires lots of education, lots of investment into your education because there is a certain amount of luck to finding that right partner, whether that's a tennis partner or a rowing partner, there's a chemistry, of course, between you and the horse that has to exist to go to those top levels. If you have these um, performances in your life, whether you're a gymnast or a skier, where for some reason the stars align and you have these perfect moments, and when you combine that with also having a perfect moment with an animal, um, I think those moments really are what drive you from those moments to those moments to those moments. And they are not, there are not a lot of them. I've been fortunate enough. I, I usually get one on a, they, we have our freestyles on a Saturday night with a full house, either at the Royal or in Devon or in Florida. And you end up with a large crowd and people are excited that you're doing it. And I've been able to have a few of those mistake-free, harmonious, absolutely in sync with my horse performances in those venues. And then you spend the next year training to do that again, because that is such an adrenaline high. You know, I was really lucky with both my horses at the Olympics. I had, pro you know, the best rides on them, um, particularly with Goose De Niro. That, you know, he was as good as any ride I ever had on him in London. And there were 26,000 people who knew what they were looking at in the stands. So you just had a feeling of everybody was happy for you, happy for him. You know, my whole team was happy. It, you know, it involves so many people um, also that follow that career if you, with you and your horse. You have your veterinarian, your blacksmith, your owners, your parents, your family, your friends. That you, When you go down that center line and you have a great ride, you're taking 20, 30 people with you on that ride. And they are getting as much enjoyment from it as you are. And then as you build in your career and, you know, people start to follow, um, Goose had many more fans than I ever had. You know, if I put a, I could put a post up that I climbed Everest and I'd probably get six likes on it. And then I put a post of goose eating a blade of grass grazing outside and you get, you know, 6,000 likes on it. So then you're taking all those people along for every ride as well. And they're having so much enjoyment of seeing him enjoying his job. I don't think there are many 
you know, sports that can that have that much emotion involved for other people, you know, sk skating for sure. You get people that go along with the whole performance of skating, art, you know, uh, singers and, and theater. But to have a sport that also um, you, ha you have that emotional level and that emotional response to is just thrilling when it all comes together. Thanks for watching. I hope that everything works out for you in your career and whatever your chosen field is. Uh, in the sport and remember no matter what you do wear your helmet protect your melon